Today we're going to practice solving systems of linear equations using the graphing method. So let's get started. So a quick review. A system of equations, well that's a collection of equations, so two or more equations. And in this case we're going to be looking at linear equations. And these equations will use the same variables and they are solved simultaneously. And this is an example of a system of linear equations. Now the solution, or the solution set for a system, well that's going to be all the ordered pairs. So all those points are values that satisfy all relations in a system. Again, simultaneously. So when we plug in that x value and that y value in this case into both of these equations, we end up with a true statement. So for this first equation, y equal to negative 2x plus 6, we'll replace that x value with a 4, the y value with a negative 2. Simplify down each side, we end up with negative 2 equal to negative 2. That's a true statement. And then we do it with the other equation. So we're doing this simultaneously, where there's an x, we plug in that 4, where there's a y, we plug in the negative 2. Simplify down both sides. Again, we end up with negative 2 equal to negative 2. This is a true statement. Both of these are true at the same time for this particular ordered pair. So this ordered pair is the solution set for this system of equations. Now in this unit, we're primarily going to look at three different methods for solving systems of linear equations. We'll start with the graphing method, because that helps to visualize what we're actually doing when we solve systems of linear equations. And then we'll move to two algebraic methods, the substitution method and the elimination method. So when we solve systems of linear equations by graphing, we're going to perform two steps. First, we're going to graph both equations on the same plane, so on that same xy coordinate plane. And the solution will be the point where the two lines intersect. Now I'm going to add a third step. It's a good idea to check your answer. That means to take our solution and plug it back into each of these equations to confirm you get a true statement for both. So let's look at a few examples. So we're going to solve the following system by graphing. Now today, our equations will be in slope-intercept form. So we can review how to graph lines that are in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept is y equal to mx plus b. So m is our slope. That's our rate of change. That'll give us our rise over the run. And b is our y-intercept, where it's crossing the y-axis. For this first equation, we have y equal to negative 2x plus 6. I'm going to start with that y-intercept. So b is equal to 6. That means we have the point 0, 6 on this line. So it's intercepting the y-axis at 6. And then we have a slope equal to negative 2. So we can rewrite this as negative 2 all over 1, and this will mean we're going to go down 2 and to the right 1. So on our graph, we'll start at that y-intercept, we'll go down 2 units, and then to the right 1. We can repeat that, down 2 and to the right 1. Or, instead of negative 2 over 1, we can write this as 2 over negative 1. These two fractions, negative 2 over 1 and 2 over negative 1, are the same as negative 2. This means we're going to go up 2 and to the left 1. So I'll start at that y-intercept again. We'll go up 2 and to the left 1. 
Now let's connect those dots to draw our line. Now we'll repeat this process with our second equation. We have y equal to negative 3 fourths x plus 1. So our y-intercept is equal to 1. So we have the point 0, 1. That's our y-intercept. Our slope is equal to negative 3 fourths. So we can view this as negative 3 over 4. That means we're going to go down 3 and to the right 4. So starting at our y-intercept, we'll go down 3 and to the right 4. Well, that's looking quite promising. But let's do this another time. We're going to go down 3 and to the right 4. And then connecting those points, we get our second line. And it's where these lines cross, that's going to be our solution. So the lines intersect at this point, and that is the ordered pair for negative 2. So let's check this answer. So we have the ordered pair for negative 2. So for this first equation, we're going to have negative 2 equal to negative 2 times 4 plus 6. This is negative 2 equal to negative 8 plus 6. And this is negative 2 equal to negative 2. And that's a true statement. Looking at the second equation, we now have negative 2 equal to negative 3 fourths times 4 plus 1. So this is negative 2 equal to, these 4's cancel, so we have negative 3 plus 1. And we again have negative 2 equal to negative 2, another true statement. So the solution to this is the ordered pair for negative 2. So the graphing method for solving systems of linear equations does provide a nice visual approach to solving these types of problems. So we can see that the intersection of these two lines represents something meaningful. So by graphing these equations, we can see whether or not a system has a unique solution. That's what we see here. They intersect at one point or whether or not it's going to have no solution. And if you remember, parallel lines never intersect. So they'll have no solution. Or if they have infinitely many solutions, which is a system consisting of basically the same lines. However, this method does have limitations. Again, as you saw, it can be time consuming to graph these equations. And even my drawing here, I mean, there's some imprecision here. Graphing by hand, it can lead to errors if you didn't draw the line too well, or you may not be able to see exactly where they intersect. So for the examples that we're going to have in these few lessons on solving using the graphing method, if there is a solution, we're only going to have integer solution. So the lines are going to cross, they're going to intersect on these grid lines, and these grid lines will have integer values. Thus, while the graphing method may help us see the answer and kind of understand what's going on, it can be less efficient and less accurate. That's why checking the answer afterwards is very important when using the graphing method. So algebraic methods, like substitution or elimination method, may offer a more efficient and more accurate approach to solving systems of linear equations. And we'll look at those in a future lesson. So let's try another. We're going to solve the following system, and again, we're going to solve this by graphing. Both of these equations are in slope-intercept form, so let's use our knowledge of slope-intercept form to graph these equations. So with our first equation, we have y equal to 4x plus 3, so our y-intercept, our b, is equal to 3. So this is going to cross the y-axis 
at three. So it's the ordered pair zero, three. Then our slope is equal to four. So we can rewrite four as a fraction. So this is four over one. So we'll rise four and run to the right one. So our y-intercept serves as our starting point. We're gonna rise four, one, two, three, four, and run to the right one. So we have a positive four. So we wrote this as four over one, but we can also write this as negative four over negative one. So that means we're gonna go down four units and run to the left one. So we're gonna start that y-intercept. We're gonna go down four units, one, two, three, four, and to the left one. Let's do that one more time, down four, and to the left one. And then we can connect our points to give us our line for this equation. Looking at that second equation, we have y equal to negative x minus two. Our y-intercept is equal to negative two. So that is the ordered pair, zero, negative two. So it intercepts the y-axis at negative two. Then our slope is equal to negative one. And we'll start by writing this as negative one all over one. So we go down one and to the right one. So down one to the right one. Let's do that one more time, down one to the right one. We can also write this slope as positive one all over negative one. So this is up one to the left one. So at our y-intercept, we're gonna go up one to the left one. And one more time, up one to the left one. And then drawing that line, we have our intersection. And these lines intersect at negative one, negative one. Let's check this solution by plugging in this ordered pair into both equations. So we have the solution, negative one, negative one. So with the first equation, we have negative one equal to four times negative one plus three. This is negative one equal to negative four plus three. Now we have negative one equal to negative one, and that's a true statement. With the second equation, we have negative one equal to negative times negative one minus two. This is negative one equal to, so this is a negative one times a negative one. So that's a positive one minus two. And this comes out to negative one equal to negative one. Again, another true statement. So the solution or the solution set to this system of equations is the ordered pair, negative one, negative one. A great way to learn is to practice on your own. We will discuss in a bit, but go ahead and pause your screen and do these two problems. Both of these equations are in slope intercept form. So I'll continue finding both the y-intercept and the slope for each line and use that information to graph the equation. So y equal to negative three x plus five, that's to intersect the y-axis at five, and then it has a slope of negative three. The second equation that intercepts the y-axis at negative two, and then has a slope of positive one half. And these two lines intersect at the ordered pair two, negative one. And then we can check our answer and to confirm that this is the solution to this system of equations. Following that same process for this second problem, our first equation is y equal to negative one half x minus two. Again, that's gonna intercept the y-axis at negative two, and it has a slope of negative one half. Second equation intercepts the y-axis at two, and has a slope of negative three halves. These two lines, they intersect at the point four, negative four, we can confirm that this ordered pair results in a true statement for both equations. And so four negative four is the solution.
Drop any questions you have in the comments. Continue practicing solving systems of equations by graphing. And I'll see you in the next video.